Hello, in this lecture, we will record governmental accounting journal entries for a project fund. Last time we have started recording the journal entries for the project fund into this being the chart of accounts for the project fund, the beginning balance here, and we entered the adjusting entries or these are going to be the entries that we're going to put in in terms of the normal journal entries for a quick worksheet to show us then the ending balances here. Last time we, we had the data one, C1 through C5 that we entered into a blue area and posted those out. We are going to continue this time from C6 down through C10. So C6, first item that we have says that we have billing for a partially completed project. Contract payment amount before retention is 420000 the retention percent being 2%. So now we're going to say that cash has been paid. So we're saying cash is going to be paid on the payable. Therefore, we can start with that. We could say it's cash affected. Yes, it is. Cash has a debit balance. We need to make it go down. Therefore, we're going to do the opposite thing to it, which in this case will be a credit. So I'm going to copy cash. I'm going to put that on the bottom just to because credits typically go on the bottom. I'm going to skip a couple lines uh, because there will be two accounts above it. Right click and paste it. One, two, three here in uh, K7. We're not gonna put the amount for cash yet, but we're just gonna note that we will be crediting cash to give us some idea of what the rest of the transaction will look like. We're paying off the contract payable. So if we look at contract payable, it's a liability account, it's a payable account, we need to make it go down. Therefore, we're gonna do the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a debit. So I'm gonna copy the contract payable going to put it on top, right click, paste it, one, two, three. We do need that to go all the way to zero, so therefore we're going to debit by the entire amount that is currently in that account of 420,000. We also have this uh, retention percent. So the retention percent then will be put into a separate account. We're going to call it uh, contract payable retention here. Track that separately. We're going to copy that. Uh, it's going to be a liability account. We're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it. Liability accounts have any credit, therefore we will credit it. And I'm going to paste it one, two, three. And the amount will be this 2% of the 420. So obviously if we had our trustee calculator and we said 420,000 times 0 0.02, we have 8,400. Uh, I would like that to do that with a formula and we would like to end up with a negative number in order to have a credit balance for the purposes of this worksheet. Therefore, instead of putting equals, I'm going to say this is a negative of this 420 times this 2% and enter. Then we can say that the cash will then be the difference between those two of 420,000 minus 8.4 gives us 411.6. I'm going to do that once again with a formula. I would like it to be a credit here. And so instead of the sum function, we're going to use the negative sum of the 420 and the 8,400 and enter. And there we have it. So if we add up the credits, we get 420, which is equal to the debits. Now we can post this out. We should probably put that this is currently working on the item C6. Okay, so we're going to post this out. Now we already have some information in the blue column because we're starting from the, where the last problem ended off and we're looking for contracts payable. There's something in it. So I'm in Q7. I'm going to double click on it. And by the way, there's something that's in it. It's in these hidden cells between D and J. That's, that's where it's at, just so you know where the data's uh, coming from. So we're going to say this plus and we're going to point to this 420,000. And that should bring this balance down to zero. Next item we're going to post will be this con uh, contracts should be contracts payable. And that's going to be right here. And we're going to say that this is going to equal this 8,400. That should bring this balance up in the credit direction. Then we'll post the cash. So here's the cash. We're going to post that to Q5. I'm going to double click on that and go to the end of Q5 and plus and then uh, select the M7 and enter. That should bring cash down. Going to scroll back over to our data and indicate that we have completed C6 by highlighting C6, right clicking and making it some type of color. In my case, it will be green. 
That means we are now on C7. So C7, it's right there. That's what we're on. We have a final billing for the completed contract. Remember, this will be an item where we have two things happening here. One, we need to uh, reverse the encumbrances. And two, we need to record the expenditures. So if we look over here in terms of the encumbrances, we're saying the encumbrances right now are at 420. That happened before the, the actual payments. Therefore, it's we didn't know exactly what it was. It's now completed. Therefore, that needs to go down to zero. So we're not going to be using this uh, 428. We'll be using that for the expenditure. For the encumbrances, we think we know they need to be gone. So this is what's in the encumbrances, uh, 420. We need to make it go down. This is what's in encumbrances outstanding, 420 credits. We need to make both those go down to zero. So this credit, uh, we make go down by doing the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a debit. And therefore, we'll start off with that, copying the, the uh, encumbrances outstanding, right-clicking in K9 and pasting it 1, 2, 3. The amount will be 420,000. And then, oh, that's not a million. 420,000. All right, and then we're going to credit 420,000, which will, of course, go to encumbrances. So I'm going to copy encumbrances. Put that in the credit item right click and paste one two three we're going to post this out now see if it does what we hope it to do which is to make these encumbrance accounts and the encumbrance outstanding account go to zero so we will go to the encumbrances outstanding in q10 double click go to the end of it and plus pointing to this 420 that should make this go down to zero out of bounds by 420 until we report the other side in q14 Double click on Q14, go to the end of it, plus point to the 420 credits, and that should bring us back down to zero there as well. And we are back in balance, indicated by the green zeros. The next half of this transaction needs to be the recording of the expenditures. So we're going to record the expenditures similar to expenses. Expenditures have debit balances, and we need to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. So we're going to copy the expenditures. I'm going to put this in a new journal entry in K12. Right click and paste 1, 2, 3. Now the amount's going to be slightly different this time because we said that the final billing for a completed contract was uh, 428. That's the number we're going to pick up, the 428. Debit and credit that 428. And the amount of the credit will go to the contracts payable. So we're going to con copy contracts payable and of course we will then pay it uh, out of contracts payable uh, at a later time and paste it one two three let's record this out we're going to scroll down here to contracts uh, construction expenditures and projects in q13 we're gonna something's in it gonna double click on it go to the end of it and plus and then point to this four hundred twenty eight thousand enter that's gonna make that amount go up and then go to the contracts payable. Again, it's got zero, but that indicates that there's something in it, meaning H21 and L5. Therefore, we're gonna double click on it, go to the end of it, plus, and we're gonna go to this credit of 428,000. That should put us back in balance here. All right, now we're gonna go back to C7. We're gonna indicate that it has been completed by highlighting, right-clicking, making it green, moving to C8. C8 says we have sales tax collected. Sales tax collected, that's going to be the form of revenue since we are the government organization here. But first, we probably want to ask, is cash affected? In this case, it is. Cash is affected. Cash is a debit balance. We're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case is another debit. So I'm going to copy cash. We're going to put that in K15. Right click, paste it one, two, three. The cash will go on top. Amount will be equal to 180,000. We will also credit 180,000. And as we mentioned, the uh, collection of taxes is going to be a form of revenue since we're the government here. Like in a for profit organization, revenue has a credit balance. We need to make it go up. Therefore, we'll do the same thing to it, which in this case will be another credit. So I'm going to copy that. We're going to paste it. One, two, three in the credit area in K16. Then we can post this out. First, post in the cash. I'm going to post this cash here and then in cell Q5. 
double click something's in it so i'm going to double click on it go to the end of it plus and then point to this 180,000. then we're going to record the uh, revenues so revenues is going to be here in um, the trial balance and then here in q11 is where we will post the amount equal to this 180,000. that will make the revenue account to go up put us back in balance and it'll make the change in fund balance go uh, up in the credit direction scrolling back to the data we're going to say that c8 has been completed right click and uh, make it green so that it indicates that it has been done next item will of course be c9 and it says that we have payment for final billing amount of 428 and retention of two percent so the final billing that means that we we made a payment so once again we can think is cash affected we're going to say yeah we made a payment cash has a debit balance we need to make it go down for the payment made therefore we're going to do the opposite thing to it which in this case will be a credit so i'm going to copy cash i'm going to put it on the bottom we're going to have two accounts above it therefore here's the c9 i'm going to put it down here two accounts down right clicking paste one two three we don't know the amount yet but it's helpful to know that we're going to we're going to credit cash that'll help us deal with the rest of the transaction the rest of the transaction being the paying off of the payable and so that's going to be the contract payable it has a uh, credit balance we need to make it go down to zero therefore we're going to do the opposite thing to it which in this case would be a debit so i'm going to copy contracts payable we'll put that up top in k18 right click and paste it one two three amount will be equal to what's in there so that 428,000 that needs to go away because we paid it off for 28,000 so we'll put that entire amount there to make it go to zero if we take a look at our data we also have the retention percent of two percent that we need to record as well we're going to record that in the the um constricts payable uh, retained contracts payable retained so we're going to copy that we're going to put that in cell uh, k19 right click and paste it one two three and the amount is going to be equal to this 428,000 times the two percent so there's that item then we can post the amount I'll, I'll, we also have to have this be a negative so this is going to be a credit so i'm going to double click on it we're going to put a negative in front of the c and there we have that we'll pull the calculator out and we need to figure out the cash that will be affected or go down now and that's going to be the 428,000 minus the 8560 and that'll give us the 419 440 i'm going to do that with a formula here so i'm going to use the negative sum formula by saying negative sum of the 428 and the 8560 that'll give us the 419 440. then we can post this out and see what we have so we're going to go to the contracts payable it's in uh, q7 something's in it so we're going to double click on it go to the end of it plus and point to the 428,000. that should bring this amount down to zero then we're going to go to the uh, q8 and we're going to post the contracts payable which we've adjusted the, uh, the the name to the proper name so contracts payable going to double click on it go to the end of it plus and point to this 8,560 and enter and then we'll post the cash here's the cash in the journal entry here's the cash in the uh, trial balance we are in q5 double click on q5 go to the end of it plus point to the 419 440 and enter we'll now move back to the data so scrolling back to the data we have c9 c9 has now been completed we will indicate that by highlighting it and making it green and we will record the last transaction which will be c10 c10 and that says we're going to pay our uh, retained percentages so if we scroll back over here and look at the retained percentages we currently have 16960 in there we need to make that go down to zero because we're paying it and we could think about first uh is cash affected yes it is because we're going to be paying paying this off therefore cash has a debit balance we need to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it which in this case would be a credit so i'm going to copy the cash 
We're going to put that on the bottom in K23. Right click and paste 123. The amount will be for that um, 16,960. So I'm going to say credit 16,960. Uh, and then we're going to debit something for that same amount. And that something will, of course, be the account of contracts payable because we need that to go down to zero. It has a credit. We're going to do the opposite thing to it being a debit in order to make it go down to zero. So I'm going to copy that. going to right click, paste it 123 in K22. And then we can post this out. I'm going to scroll up to contracts payable. Uh, there it is in Q8. Double click on it, go to the end of it, and plus, scroll back down, and we're going to point to the 16,960, and enter. Goes down to zero there. We're then going to post to cash. Uh, that's going to be the second half of the journal entry, so here it is in the journal entry. Here's cash in the trial balance. Here's where we're going to record it in Q5. Uh, Double clicking, go to the end of it, plus, and then we're going to point to the 16,960 in cash, that should make the cash go down. It should put us back in balance. And there we have that. That'll complete all the journal entries for the project funds that we will be doing. We've completed through C10. Next time, we're going to take this uh, trial balance and we're going to use it in order to make financial statements from it.